Back when I was about three or four, my mother used to go mental at me for sitting with my eyeballs pressed to the TV screen anytime I'd play my Sega Mega Drive. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it came out just after hoop rolling. She used to say to me, Ducky, you'll go blind sitting that close to it. Well, wouldn't you know it, a couple of years later, it turns out she was right, when I find out I'm profoundly short-sighted. I genuinely believed for years sitting too close to the TV messed up my eyes. I held Sonic the Hedgehog personally responsible for my squint wrinkles. It wasn't until I was already an adult when it clicked with me. Wait, hang on a second. Why did you tell me sitting too close to the TV when I was a kid made me blind? Because it did. You always sat on top of the TV, and now your eyes are bad. It doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. Did it ever occur to you that the reason I sat so close to the TV was because my eyes were already bad? Huh. That makes a lot more sense. Anyway, do you want a cup of tea? Do I want a cup of tea? I want 20 years of my life back! My awful vision was missed for a lot of my young life. Not sure how, considering how bad it is. But it was noticed pretty quickly not long after starting school. Ducky, tell your mother to have your eyes tested. What? Why? Because of what you did back at your desk. Now get back to class. Back to class? But I'm in class. No, you're in the bathroom. Ah. So I... Defecated on the lap of a classmate, yes. Ah, looking back on it now, that actually makes a lot of sense. So I was given glasses. But just because I had them, it doesn't mean I liked them. Quite the opposite, in fact, because I hated them. First of all, these were quite the pair of f***ing glasses. The mother was broke, single, and raising four kids, so these were bargain bin, government issue bicycle wheel frames. I mean, I once accidentally made better frames with a coat hanger that time I locked my keys in my car. And it wasn't just bad frames. Because my vision was so bad, and my mother couldn't afford the extra charge to have the edges of the lenses thinned, the lenses that sat in these frames were thicker than a lesbian's fingers. Which wouldn't have been a problem, only for I was a kid who had to wear these around other kids in school. And kids are inherently assholes. I believed it back then, and I believed it a year ago when I overheard one ask a fella in a wheelchair if he was a care. And this wasn't some soft modern day school where they taught you to be accepting and understanding about other people's differences and shortcomings, and where they teach you to count all the way up to however many genders you need to feel like a special little flower. Oh no! This was the 90s, where wild, feral children would run from classroom to classroom looking for bags to urinate in and weaker children to eat, and the teacher wouldn't put a stop to it because it did involve having to extinguish her cigarette. So showing up to this school with anything out of the ordinary about you, especially improvised scaffolding on your face was like handing out personalised invitations to your own celebrity roast. Hey everyone, Ducky has glasses. Hey Specs, catch. <coughs> What's wrong? Didn't you see that one coming? Four eyes, nerd, gay scientist. Also, I don't know if you've ever been kicked into the face with a football, but I can tell you it's way worse when you have a pair of improvised knuckle dusters strapped to your face. So yeah, needless to say, I didn't take to him immediately. For the first few months, I rebelled against him and would take him off the second I was dropped at school. Okay now, behave yourself in there. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't suspect a thing. She's so stupid. <laughs> but what nobody warned me about was not being able to see was catastrophic for my ability to learn to read. So I begrudgingly got used to them over time and made my peace with having to be stuck with them for the rest of my life. Not that it wasn't a daily pain in the rectum. You'd be surprised by the amount of stuff in life that glasses get in the way of. For instance, you can lay on your side, easily rub your eyes, wear over your headphones, wear 3D glasses at the cinema, quickly put on a t-shirt, see in the shower, have peripheral vision, find where you left them, see when you're swimming, see when it's raining, have your photo taken, you're always cleaning them, they're flimsy, you're blind so you will sit in them, and they fog up when you're opening anything hot like an oven, a dryer, or your girlfriend's legs. And that's not even scratching the surface. But if you did scratch the surface, that'd be a permanent part of your vision. Boom! Point made, and capped it off with a terrible dad joke. Woo! You nailed it, lad. You're the best. Aw, thanks, Drunk Ducky. You know, you've always been there for me. Now, contact lenses is something I always wanted to get. A f ton cheaper than laser eye surgery and solves most of my glasses problems. So if the only trade-off is I gotta touch my eyeball twice a day, well that was a price I was willing to pay. But the thing is, I have the stigmata of the eyeballs, or astigmataism, as my optician likes to call it. And if you don't know what that is, in simple terms, my eyes are more oval than they are round, so they refract light in weird ways. Which not only means that every light I see at night has a great big lens flare around it, making driving at night more difficult and raves f***ing amazing, but it also means that normal round contact lenses won't work on my not normal oval eyes. I needed a thing called toric lenses, which are specially made for those suffering from the unholy ocular stigmata. But when my opticians rang the suppliers of these contact lenses with my prescription, none of them made anything close to what I needed. Yeah, so he'll need them in a power 10? Hey lads, they wanna know if we have them in a power 10. <laughs> it's a dog and a stick he needs, not contact lenses. Ah, is he trying to look into the future? Yeah. He's probably some gay scientist. <laughs>
So unfortunately, I had to wear glasses pretty much entirely through my school years, enduring day after day of the same old shit people say to people with glasses. Hey, what's the answer to number two? I don't know. Ask Ducky. He wears glasses. He'll know. Hey, Ducky, how many fingers am I holding up? Three. Your turn. Hey, let me try them on. Oh my god, you're fair blind. How long have you been sitting on this information? So, through a combination of not being able to get them in my prescription and lack of funds due to my entire teenage weekly allowance going towards cigarettes and Sunny D. Seriously, the original recipe of that stuff had to have been laced with heroin or something. I was able to quit cigarettes, but they had to take Sunny D off the market to make me stop. And then they brought it back with a new recipe and it just... wasn't the same. It's around that time I actually met Drunk Lucky for the first time, funnily enough. What was I saying? Oh, come on, I can't do all the work. Ye come here... You do nothing but laugh at all my hard work. Half of you aren't even subscribed. You just put your fate in the algorithm lottery in hopes that it'll one day suggest me again. And you'll be back here in a year and a half going, Oh my god, I forgot you existed. Takes two seconds, lads. And it's 100% free or your money back. Just don't go telling everybody about it now. I don't want any old cretin coming in here wandering around the place and mucking up me good carpets. Actually, on the topic of bad vision, I have a pet peeve about how media portrays it. They always show it as being blurry. Like a typical foggy, smooth, blur like a Vaseline lens type thing. But speaking for myself, and maybe more short-sighted people. I tried asking at the yearly meeting, but we all end up just getting lost on the way there. Our vision isn't blurry. Not in the conventional sense. It's crystal clear. It's just undefined and muddled. And I know that sounds like a mind f but I've thought about it long and hard, and you know what gets it fairly spot on? Gran Turismo 1 on the PlayStation 1. Short-sighted people are just running a PS1 draw distance. But anyway, I was fresh out of school and at the ripe old age of... Barely legal, according to my search history. By the time I finally got my hands on some contact lenses. And I loved them. Yeah, there was an adjustment period. The opticians didn't emphasise enough to me just how important it is to have freshly washed hands before you put them in and take them out. So I, not knowing that even skin oils can feel like salt on the eyeball, would be like, Ah, wash me hands ten minutes ago. It'll be grand. Hmm. I'm in a great deal of pain. Also, my close family and friends had to adjust to the weirdness that is seeing a lifetime glasses wearer suddenly lose 80% magnification of their face. But beyond that, it was an all-round improvement in my life. But one area of my life in particular, and that was how attractive I was to women. Now, I expected a small uptick from the attention I was going to get from women, bringing it from zero to one. I'm a realist. At the end of the day, these were contact lenses, not a rohypnol. But the attention I started to draw blindsided me. Women started flirting with me on nights out, female cashiers would start suddenly striking up conversations when I was doing me shopping, and there was an all-round sharp uptick in my romantic life. There was even this one day when I was at work. This pair of older women came up to the counter giggling like a group of teenagers, and one of them steps forward and says, Brida thinks you're very handsome. Irene! Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. Do you know how attractive you have to be for someone else's grandmother to call you handsome? Now up until this point, I had been more or less totally ignored by women. Outside of a girlfriend I had for six months when I was 14, it was all quiet on the sexual front. So when I started being noticed, I was actually a little bit pissed off by it. Hey, can I get your number? Oh, I'm good enough for you now, am I? I bet if I was 14 you wouldn't be standing here chatting me up, would you? It's people like you that make me sick. Now, a lot of people will try Disney-fy it by saying the power was in you all along and the contact lenses give you confidence. But I've always shot that down immediately because contact lenses didn't suddenly make my antisocial ass any better at talking to women. I started to gain confidence because of the attention I was now getting. More women would talk to me more often, so I just became naturally more comfortable in that space. The real reason I was getting more attention is simple. Generally, women don't find men who wear glasses attractive. I know, I can already feel the comments. But what about Jason Momoa? What about Michael B. Jordan? What about Brad Pitt? All of them are already established attractive men who occasionally wear glasses. Chris Hemsworth isn't hot because he wore glasses. He's hot because he's Chris Hemsworth wearing glasses. This also isn't a problem for fellas. We've long since embraced glasses on women. Take a saucy secretary, slap some glasses on her, and boom! Hot boss, librarian, and or teacher. Take a hot pilot, slap some glasses on him and uh, Where'd he go? Wait, what's that? He's now working for the US Air Force due to the incredible skill he's shown at flying under the radar of women? Well, how about that? Say what you want about men, but us being a randy bunch really does make us a lot more accepting of the weird and wonderful than the apparently more sympathetic gender. Hey lads, there's a girl over there with a peg leg and severe Tourette's. Really? Dibs. Seriously? Two things. The positions and the dirty talk. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. At least ask her if she's any other one-legged friends or that. But yeah, I think losing the specs played a big part in me being able to smash more box than Crash Bandicoot in my early 20s. At the very least, I didn't stand out as the one in the group who wears glasses anymore, and up in my ability to pull women really evened out the playing field a bit, having the gang of boys a bit more homogenous. Homogenous. Homo.
genius. Gear sa- Oh, come on!